What's up, YouTube? Pokey Primer here. Primer ready to deliver you our week three team builder here in the ILCB. And my freaking pencils falling on the floor and shit. I'm losing my mind. Um, this week we are taking on Chris and the Charlottes and Landits. Chris followed us over here to the ILCB. Not surprising because a lot of our friends came over to the ILCB, which is dope. But um, <clears throat> we are taking on Chris this week. And uh, his team is kind of powerful it seems actually really really good because uh what ended up happening is we had somebody join but they didn't do anything with it like they just kind of were there so uh we essentially decided just to kick him out because he wasn't actually active and then we had a spot open chris came in and he kind of took what was a leftover after the draft but this is actually some pretty good leftovers so he got uh mega low punny raikou victini sableye slurpuff tornadus i uh, Verizion, Registeel, Seismitoad, Sligu, Driftblim, and Regirock. So, uh, looking at his team, um, he's definitely got um, a little bit of a hazard week. He's, he's very hazard weak, so if I can hazard stack him, it'd be really, really nice. Because the only thing he has to remove hazards is Defog Driftblim, and I have plenty of ways of beating Driftblim. So I'm not worried about Driftblim. So, that's cool. I'll be really happy if I don't see Drift Blim, and I try to ha- I'll, I'll be really happy if I don't see Drift Blim. That'd be great. You know what, my, my chair is being asshole-ish. I'm just gonna put the freaking arm things down, and we're gonna be comfortable that way. He also has a decently sized fairy weakness, and not too many things that really threaten Mega Altaria, which is great. Because... Uh, Mega Altaria is going to be our leadoff for this week. We are going to be running 200 HP, 56 in defense with a bold nature, and max special defense on our beautiful Puff the Mega Altaria here. Uh, and we're going to pull up this calc because I do want to make sure that I have my reasoning down for why I did this. Yes. Okay, so we're going to put you to that. We're going to put you to that. Yes. All right. So, um, we are running a remove set of Cotton Guard, Roost, Heal Bell, and Hyper Voice. So, really, really s solid, strong move set. Um, Cotton Guard is here because with these defense EVs and whatnot, we Cotton Guard, we uh, can essentially avoid uh, being O-Code by Belly Drum Slurpuff. Belly Drum Slurpuff does a max 94% to us. So if we're at full HP, we get a Cotton Guard up. If that thing decides to Belly Drum, we're going to get 55 to 65% off on a Hyper Voice. And then we'll be able to hit him again the following turn because uh, we will not die till we play rough. So that's great. And then we could potentially roost up on something else. Uh, overall, just the the Cotton Guard allows us to wall certain mons on the team. Uh, it allows us to completely shut down Mega Lopunny. It allows us to completely shut down a physical Victini. It allows us to completely annihilate... Uh, Verizion. Verizion can't touch us at that point. Registeel. Registeel, is a standard Registeel set, is is mind-bogglingly useless against us, which is crazy. If we have a Cotton Guard up, Iron Head is doing literally zero. If I can find the right spread that I was looking at. This one. Yes. Iron Head from a standard bulky Registeel is doing at most... 16%. So we can definitely whittle that thing down, plus we can roost off any damage. So that'd be great. Having the max special defense is to allow us to take uh, potential poison coverage on things. Uh, Tornadus, Seismitoad, Sligu, uh, all learn things like uh, Sludge Wave. And uh, of course, Victini learns things like uh, Glaciate. So we can take those hits very, very nicely and uh, not really worry about them too much. Uh, having only Hyper Voice as our only attacking move is kind of an up and a down at the same time, because while it does give us a really hard-hitting move, 
uh, it does kind of uh, force us to um, it does kind of force us to it, it kind of limits us to not being able like we can't hit um, registeel hard at all we can stall it down but we can't hit registeel hard we can't hit victini hard at all either but um, we can we can work off of that it's not that big of a deal we have other things to take care of those mons. Uh, Heal Bell is here because I do want to keep my team status free as much as I can because I feel like that will be very important in this matchup to keep my team healthy. So we're going to make sure to do that with our Meg Altaria. Next up we have Moon Duck, the Cresselia holding the leftovers. Okay, Thunder Wave, Calm Mind, Psyshock, and Moonblast. Again, just standard ass set minus the Moonlight. It's the only thing about this set that kind of worries me is not having Moonlight, but at the same time, it could be effective. So we'll see what happens. A standard spread, bold nature, everything like that. Thunder Wave is here because I want a lot of things paralyzed. Mega Low Punny, we wall and we could paralyze it. We could paralyze Victini, because Victini can't really hurt us too much. We can paralyze the Sableye, making it potentially get para-haxed on certain turns, which would be great. We could paralyze the Slurpuff. We can take a we can take a hit from Slurpuff. I'm 90% positive we take any hit from Slurpuff. Belly Drum Slurpuff versus Cresselia. My Moon Duck. Put you at plus six. Yeah. There's no universe where um there's no universe where Slurpuff can Oko me. With, with any move play rough it's, it's probably the hardest hitting move and it does at most 72 percent so even a crit play rough we we have a we have a it's like a 50 50 chance for us to live a crit play rough and it's more so in our favor so that's good to know like this thing just eats so many hits we can paralyze anything and hopefully para hacks it enough times we can set up calm minds of, against pretty much every a lot of pokemon on their team without any real issue, and eventually beat them, which would be really, really cool. Uh, just This Cresselia is just meant here to be bulky and annoying, like Cresselia usually is. So hopefully that'll work out. Next up we have Roar XD, the Aerodactyl. Uh, we're running a Choice Scarf Aerodactyl this week because of the Mega Putty. We're running just enough speed with a Jolly Nature to outspeed a max speed Timid Raikou. So that we can earthquake that bitch. We have uh, max attack, of course, and then we threw the rest into HP because why not? We're talking Stone Edge, Earthquake, Aerial Ace, and Tailwind. Very interesting set. Uh, Stone Edge is just for stab. Stone Edge and Aerial Ace are for stab. Stone Edge allows us to uh, hit the Victini, hit the Tornadus, hit the Drift Blim. Uh, this is our kind of response. If I think Drift Blim is going to go for a defog, we switch immediately into. Uh, Aerodactyl, and we click the Stone Edge button, and we're going to murder it. Uh, Earthquake is there for the Raikou as our way of beating the Raikou. If I know it's locked into something, I know it's down in range of us being able to kill it, which I believe, let me see what that range is. It's a standard Timid Raikou versus our Aerodactyl. Rar XD can kill it from 75%. So if it's anywhere below 75%, we know we can kill it with an Earthquake. And we can murder it that way. Uh, we have the Air Lace because of the Virizion. And the Megalopunny specifically. Uh, Megalopunny does not like Air Lace. Megalopunny uh, actually takes uh, 66 to 78% from an Air Lace. So if that thing's taken any prior damage at all, especially Hazard's damage... Um, we can we can beat it, I believe. Let me let me look at the hazards count. We need uh, two layers of spikes and stealth rocks. We have a twelve point five percent chance to Oko, and there's a seventy five percent chance that we have three spikes and stealth rocks. So that's interesting to note. But uh, we also have the tailwind, which is really really interesting. We have the tailwind because um, Tailwind is there so that we can, uh, if I can see a situation where I know I can get one of my other team members to sweep, which actually, now that I notice that, this is the only one of my team that's actually fast, 
that I brought this week, which is interesting. The only one that actually even has speed investments on it, which is cool. <laughs> Funny to note. But um, I can set up a Tailwind, and then some of my slower mons can then put in some work on their team. Slower mons, such as Knackles, the Sandslash. We are running 248 HP, max attack, adamant nature, and 8 into our spadef. Knackles is Assault Vested, which is which is cool. We're running Rapid Spin, Earthquake, Knockoff, and Super Fang. This is kind of a good... This can beat 1v1. This can easily 1v1 um, Registeel, because we can Rapid Spin on it without any real issues. If it wants... It can't Thunder Wave us. Iron Head is not doing too, too, too much. About 20 to 25%, nothing too spectacular. And then we can knock off its left, we can it's knock off its leftovers, and we can we can super fang it and get it down really low to in range of earthquake being able to take it out, which is awesome. And then we can just win because we outspeed the the red steel naturally, and I don't think he's gonna run speed investments to try and outspeed my sand slash because that's a lot of speed investment on a red steel. He would have just 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 in general, like if he for some reason decides that that is relevant for him to do he would have to run if he keeps it a careful nature he would have to run 124 speed evs on his registeel to outspeed me or if he made himself a speed boosting nature he'd have to run he'd have to run at least 64 which still is more which is giving him away a lot of Registeel's potential bulk, which makes it so much easier for uh, Sandslash to beat it. Which is good for me, not good for him. Super Fang, I figured, was a really, really good kind of tech move to have on here, because I don't think he's ever going to try to switch Sableye in on something that's definitely going to hit it a lot harder than other things will. And Super Fang is really nice because things like the Verizion could switch in, things like the... Uh, Registe Registeel doesn't want to switch in, but Seismitoad could switch in, Sligu could switch in, uh, Regirock could try to maybe switch in, and they'd be really, really good to chunk those things down by half, one or two times, and then be able to just KO them with one of my other moves, or switch out to something that can KO them from that range. Especially if they don't have any form of recovery, which would be really cool. So, I figured that was useful. Um, just gotta be careful with the knockoff, with spamming knockoff, because if he does bring Frizion, that thing can switch into this very easily, and then get a justified boost, and I don't want that to happen. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, hopefully, our Sand Slash can uh, put in some work there this week. Next up, we have Thornberry, our Ferrothorn, which is running a little bit of a more interesting set, I feel. Uh, we are running uh, 248 HP. We are running 80, 180 in Spadef, and we are running 80 in Attack. With an impish nature. We wanted to have an impish nature. The 80 in spadef, or 180 in spadef, what did we have that for? What did we what did we have that for? Um I'm blanking so hard on what we put this in here for. I have no idea. I have no idea. Maybe it was um Oh, wrong set. Hold on. I don't know exactly off the top of my head what it was in here for. Import it. Yep. Okay. Ferrothorn. Thornberry. It's the wrong one. Go to something else. Then go to Ferrothorn. Very. Yep. There we go. All right. So against his team, we go to uh, maybe Raikou. Was it Raikou that I was thinking about? Rash. Rash nature. Aura sphere. There it is. Uh, we are not too ko by Aura sphere. I know that much. Um. I'm just I'm I'm blanking right now on what I exactly had these specific EVs in here for, because I know any fire move from Victim is gonna take us down to Sash immediately. So I don't remember exactly what I put them in here for. I did make this team a while ago, um, so I'm not totally sure. 
what they were there for, but just know that they had their purpose. Just allow this thing to bulk special hits because he has a lot more special attackers. That could hurt him a little less. This thing allows us to. It, 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 this allows us to switch into Raikou relatively easily. It could. It could allow us to switch into Tornadus relatively easily. We switch into Registeel every single time. We switch into Seismitoad every single time. Sligu we switch in every time with no real issue. Um, there's a lot of options we have with that. We have the Thunder Wave to shut down uh, opposing offensive threats. Uh, if I see something that could potentially bring me down to my sash, so I'm going to make sure that rocks are not on my side of the field. If I see anything that could potentially bring me down to my sash, if I bring it in or something starts setting up and it gets scary, I, I still have my sash. I'm going to go in, I'm going to Thunder Wave it, and I'm going to get rid of it being an issue. Uh, I have the knockoff because I want items items knocked off. Victini is a free switch into this thing every time. So if I can go for a knockoff on a switch and I can get Victini's item knocked off, whether it's spec, scarf, band, whatever, life orb, I don't care what item it is, it's going to get knocked off. Anything will get knocked off, which would be nice. And you have spikes and stealth rocks. I want to try to set up hazards. I could, I could, I can definitely hazard stack on him, especially if I don't see a drift blim. And then hazard stacking will be really, really nice against him because he can't really do anything about it, which is nice. So hopefully I can get that plan pulled off. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, that's just basically the plan with Ferrothorn. Uh, I just want it to be able to uh, do some work for me this week. And, you know, the Iron Bobs could be nice if I, I can switch this thing in and sack it on something. That'd be cool. But uh, last mod we're bringing is Breathe the Gold Bat. Breathe the Gold Bat's been getting a lot of work lately, and I'm really happy about that. We're rocking the EVA Light, of course, fully physically defensive. Our team is just so bulky. Our team is so fat. Like, look at this bulk, bulk, bulk-ish, bulk, bulk. Like, just bulk everywhere. Now, Bree is holding that EVA Light. We're rocking Bray Bird, Roost. Poison Fang and Super Fang. So, reason behind this move set: first of all, Inner Focus. I see this thing as going one v one versus Megalopony. I could see that situation happening where Megalopony goes comes in, goes for a fake out, tries to get that extra damage on Golbat, and I can, you'll see that happen. Well, Inner Focus is going to prevent me from flinching, and I can just Brave Bird it and knock it out. Or I don't believe I don't believe Brave Bird knocks it out. I believe. I believe it, but it does definitely do a sizable chunk of damage. It does a very sizable chunk of damage. Brave Bird actually has a good chance to do decent damage. It's like 83 to 98 percent, which is huge damage, in my opinion. I, I absolutely think. So, so that means that I can have a good chance of beating the Megalopony with this thing, because a fake out to us is only doing about twelve to fourteen percent, which is not that big of a deal. I can take twelve to fourteen percent and roots that off later, and a return at most is doing thirty-five percent. Which to me is is chip damage at most. It's chip damage because I roost that off. I, I can roost a fake out return combination off easily. So I'm not complaining about that. Uh, roost obviously for longevity. Poison Fang I brought because entirely, even though it doesn't do damage, do, do large damage, I want to be able to click this move against something because it has a 50% chance to badly poison the target. 50% chance to inflict toxic on something. That's cool and I... I I like the ability to get a little bit of chip damage on something that might want to try to switch in, as well as being able to toxic poison it. I think that'd be really, really cool. If I can get it to happen, that'd be great. And lastly, we're packing Super Fang. We are running double Super Fang this week because I don't have too many things that break Registeel very easily. I don't have too many things that break Verizion very easily. I don't have things that necessarily break some of his walls. Breakthrough Raikou. Breakthrough Seismitoad. Notice I'm not running HP Grass on anything. 
I don't have anything that necessarily breaks through Reggie Rock. It, outside of the earthquakes that aren't even doing half on either of the mons that I have earthquake on. Like I'm 100% positive a standard Reggie Reggie Rock a mixed defensive tank versus Sand Slash. It's kind of a joke. Uh, Sand Slash's earthquake does not do half, and that's with only 16 investment. That's with no investment in an impish nature. If it's if it's a fully specially defensive one, even it's there's a 1.2 percent chance to a KO after leftovers. So after leftovers, the thing lives another earthquake 98 percent of the time. So I'm not really worried about this thing. I I, I need super fangs to be able to put things in range. So, hopefully, uh, that can work out in our favor if he brings. If he doesn't bring it, that's even better. I'm not going to complain if he doesn't bring it. I'll take it, you know? I'm not going to complain. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the plan with this team. If you guys have enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. You will see the battle later on today or tomorrow, depending on my mood. And, uh, yeah, if again, if you enjoyed, leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh... That'll be all till next time. I'm Poké Primer, signing off.